Alright, so because I somehow mis, uh, misplaced my document with my instructions and I lost the copy I had so I can't scan it, I'm actually making a YouTube video here. Uh, don't mind my uh, office mess I got going on over here. It's uh, been pretty backed up here lately. But anyway, after plugging in your hard drive here, uh, it should automatically pop up the Explorer. Let me try to do this while recording. Uh, and when it does, you'll see a new drive pop up on your computer. In my case, it's this one right here, uh, which is the 100.81 terabytes. If that doesn't pop up, then you can actually just go to the file explorer itself but it'll pop up right in this corner telling you you plugged in a new drive and you can click on it but if not you can click on the file explorer right down here the folder or sometimes it could be on your desktop and then from there you'll go over here and you'll see the new drive e it may be labeled something else like if you already have a drive labeled e it might be labeled d but anyway, once you click on the drive and see the contents, you'll know which one's the correct one. If you go to this PC, for example, you can see my C drive, my disk drive, and the hard drive I just plugged in. So we'll open that, and then we'll click on Setup. And then we have the 32-bit and 64-bit versions of the program. Most newer computers within the last 10, 12 years will be... 64 bit and a way you can check that is let me go here you can well i'm not going to do it right now but you can actually actually go to this computer and it shows all the specs and it'll say whether it's a 32 bit or 64 bit uh operating system or you can just install the 64 bit by default and if yours is not 64 bit, it just won't do it. It just won't install, in which case you would just install the 32 bit. So I'm gonna double click that here. And I am using a real old computer right here to do this testing because my actual computer is being occupied. So this is actually going to be the worst case scenario on this computer. Uh, I'll tell it to go ahead and create a desktop icon. And then we'll hit next and let it install. I actually think this would be a lot better than the, uh, the instructions that I had printed because this is actual hands-on. And real quick, I'm going to go over a couple things. If your disk drive is not popping up, uh, I want you to disconnect it and try a different USB port. But before you ever disconnect it, if you ever disconnect that hard drive while the, uh, the uh, hard drive is actually plugged in the computer, you want to go right down here to this arrow here and you want to go to this little thing which is basically the removable drives you want to right click it and eject it see it shows drive E you want to eject it by doing that you're saving the life of your drive because uh, if you just unplug it while it's working it could cause issues down the line the computer is wanting to restart after installing that program you should go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do that. But you should just so everything is, uh, you know, flushed out and installed properly. I'm just being a little reckless right here. But, you know, you should do that. There might even have been a case where you run into an issue and you can't get it to start because of that. If so, go ahead and manually restart it yourself. Turn the computer back on and then open it. It's telling me there's a new update from the time that I made this drive. Uh, which is probably just one new one version newer. You can go to this website and download it if you want to. I'm not going to do that because this one works fine. 
I'm just going to hit OK and acknowledge it. But if you don't want to see it anymore, you can go to the website and download that. So right here at the top, we're going to go to Karaoke. And then we're going to go to Manage Karaoke DB. This is when we're going to tell the, the program where all the music is, okay? So we're going to go to Add. And then we're going to direct the computer to that hard drive, which I know is hard drive E. So I'm going to direct it there. And then from inside the hard drive, I'm going to direct it to the karaoke. So I'm going to click karaoke, have that highlighted. That way it knows where to find the music because that's where the music is at. And I'm going to select folder. And then I can make it pop up by whatever way. I'm just going to leave it by default. Hit OK. There it has the, the link to where everything's at. And then I'm uh, going to go ahead and hit, I believe, update all. There we go. And now we're going to spend a very, very, very long time, very long time, the faster your computer, the better, but this is a lot of music. It takes me like two days to copy all this stuff. And if something happens and it messes up, uh, I have to restart it while copying it. But this part, uh, when I just loading it, uh, it's just telling the computer where it's at. So... It doesn't fail as much, but if you have an older or slower computer, it could fail. And, uh, yeah, so it's a good idea to, if you can't keep an eye on it and see when it gets done, uh, if you feel like that it shut down in the process of doing it, go ahead and do it again. And what's going to happen is whatever songs it missed, now let's say it gets 60% done, and for some reason your computer shuts off or it goes dead or something like that. Whenever you do it again, it's going to go ahead and uh, it's going to start adding the songs that it didn't get the first time. You see right there, we're on 23 of, uh, uh, what is that, 20,986. And you can actually see the songs being added right there. So yeah, I'm probably going to have to stop this video here because uh, this could take a while. But I'll actually be back with a follow-up video uh, once we get this all loaded. And once you get this far, and uh, I'll show you how to, a few things on the program. Uh, I'm not the best at the program myself. I just have the music. Um, but... You know, there's a there's a lot of advanced stuff you can do, like hooking up the mixers and, you know, all that good stuff. But basically me, I type in the name of my singer, I choose their song, and I, I, ahead of time I go ahead and get me a few singers ready with their songs. And that's about as much as I do. But if you want to check online about OpenKG, a lot of people use this software for their music. And another thing, all this music here, uh, if you find another program you like better, uh, you can load up this music to that program. You know, it doesn't have to be this program. I just use this program because it's a free license uh, for everyone. As long as you don't sell it. And I'm technically not selling the program. I'm selling uh, the data that's on here. And the knowledge. Alright, well, I'll follow up on the next one.